Hi, I'm Avery Fure, the SAS VEX captain at the time this video is being recorded, and this is the VEX CAD Advanced course. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to CAD chain. Okay, uh, so, I mean, you have your setup, right? You put in the C channel, and then you put in adequate spacing, the spacers, and then you put in your sprockets. Okay, and hopefully you have shot colors everywhere, and hopefully you also have bearing flats. Uh, I'm not going to bother put them in in for this cat example because I'm focusing on the chain. Okay, but you have your sprockets in place, right? And now you're wondering, how can I efficiently put in all the chain links? Because if you were to go to the library, right, and we go to motion and we go to chain, we can see a chain link here, right? But imagine how many chain links you have to put around this entire thing to make it work properly, right? That's so many chain links. And it's not necessarily the best use of your time to point to point every single one into the correct place. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a more efficient way to cat the chain. Uh, do note that it won't come out perfectly, but the purpose of this more is to uh, do the entire chain path so then you can see if uh, the chain runs into any other obstructions like maybe a standoff or something like that in your actual robot. Okay, but it won't necessarily give you the correct number of chain links you need to use to tension your chain properly, and neither will it necessarily uh, wrap around the sprocket perfectly. But you'll see how it works. It comes out pretty good, and if you zoom out, it will look basically correct. <laughs> All right, so we're going to create a component, and we are going to uh, call it chain. Okay. Within this component, with it activated, I'm going to go to Create Sketch, okay, and I'm going to click on the surface of this sprocket here, okay, and it creates like this kind of snowflake-like thing. So I click on that, all right, and while you're in the Sketch uh, palette, you can use all sorts of other tools. Like I'm now going to use this tool called the Projection Tool by clicking P, and no. Before I use a projection tool, if I try to draw anything around here with reference to de these lines, uh, it's not going to actually work. So that's why I'm projecting the surface into the sketch. Okay, so I'm click on the surface, click OK, and it now gives me all those relevant points. And uh, because I started my sketch on this surface, I can still uh, make a whole bunch of relevant uh, drawings over uh, these points, but sometimes it makes it easier to just have them all up here, so I'm also going to project this surface, but you don't necessarily have to do it for this one because you start the sketch on uh, the sprocket. Okay, so now I have these both projected, and I'm going to draw two circles in the center to the center of uh, this valley between two teeth of the sprocket. Okay, and you will know the center because it puts a dot very clearly there, which is the center of uh, this arc here. Okay. Uh, and you want to make sure your circle is black because that means it's uh, fully constrained. Okay, so I'm going to do that also for this one. Uh, next step, uh, in case you didn't know, I click C to pull up the circle tool. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line. I'm clicking L to do that. And I'm going to click down on the circle and go to the next circle. It's very important while you're doing this that you don't click down on one of these points uh, that locks it into place. Okay, you want to put it on circle. If it gives you this symbol, the tangent symbol, that's actually fine because uh, once we've drawn all these lines, give me a moment. Okay, uh, whatever is not tangent yet, you're going to go tangent using the tangent constraint. Okay, so I'm going to tangent this line to this circle and this line to that circle. Before I do that, um, Problem might run into while you're drawing lines as you accidentally make it horizontal. In that case, uh, I will just ask to go find that horizontal constraint, delete it, and then uh, tangent it properly so you don't run into any problems. Okay, and two tangents were already created on this side. Okay, right. yeah. Why is there no constraints there? Wait, give me a sec. Dimensions, show constraints. 
Oh, it is there. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It was just a bit hidden. Okay. So now you got that all set up. Now you're going to use the trim tool. Okay. Uh, you can either pull it up by clicking the scissors button or you can click T. I'm clicking T. And you want to trim away the inner arcs, but nothing else. Okay. We still need this outer arc here. Do not click on that. Only click on the two inner arcs. Okay. And with that, you click finish, finish, finish sketch, and we have our uh, path catted for the chain links. Okay, now I'm going to import a chain link. Okay, remember always try to point to point things exactly in a place where you want them. Okay, so you first fix the orientation. I don't think that came out perfectly. Okay. And you point to point, uh, and you want to select this triangle symbol that's the middle of this cylinder of the uh, chain link. Okay, and do something similar for this. Uh, I don't know valley of uh, between two teeth. The sprocket, also the triangle, the center of that. Okay, so that center aligns the center, and it's the, the uh, chain link is centered to the sprocket. Okay. We click OK. Should all be done while you have your chain component activated, by the way, if that wasn't clear. Okay, and we're going to go to create a pattern, pattern on path. Okay, for type, we're going to go to components. Objects is this chain link. Path is the path we created. This arrow is a bit weird. You usually drag it backwards. Direction is fine. Orientation is path direction. Okay, and Quantity, I mean, you kind of get a sense for this the more you do this. I'm going to guess this is about 32 links. Uh, and how I check this is just looking at, like, the ones uh, curving around the sprocket won't come out properly. So you look at the straight ones and try to make those as good as possible. And also keep in mind that this isn't going to work out entirely all the time. So you just try to adjust this here and there. To make the straight ones work. So I think I can add in one more link. Okay, that doesn't look quite aligned, so I'm gonna pull it a bit more. Uh tiny smidge more on top of that. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna click OK. Alright. Now that you've done that, uh, you want to go to your sketches, you want to hide that sketch because no one wants to see that sketch for the chain path. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to activate an entire file. And we have the chain catted. Now, again, doesn't really quite work when going around the sprocket. You see it's in the sprocket T for this right one. And this left one, oh, okay, it looks like it did come out pretty well there, but uh, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Like, it's not quite uh, lined up there. Okay. It's just an imperfection of the tool. It's not necessarily designed only for uh, cutting chain links around sprockets, right? Um, but again, usually you use this to just check that none of these chain links are hitting something and that your chain path is actually good, right? I'm going to do this one more time just to make it very clear uh, with a different example where the two sprockets are of different sizes. Okay, so I'm going to go create a new component. Change example number two. Okay, this component's activated. Uh, and why I've created a new component is that I want some of the things to be different in this new component. Okay, so I'm going to copy over all this. Command C, Command D. And since I had a uh, number two activated, everything I just pasted is being pasted into component number two. Okay. So yeah, it's not grayed out because it is part of component two and activated. And I'm gonna go to motion, sprockets. By the way, all sprockets we use are always the high strength uh, type. Never use these ones up here, always use high strength. Okay, so I'm going to insert the 6 2 sprocket. Mm, I don't know if that quite worked. Okay, that's good. 
and square. Okay, so we got that going. Now again, same process. I'm gonna try to do these steps a bit quickly because you've already seen them. Create a chain component. Uh, it's gonna call it chain uh, brackets one because there's another component with the same name and you can never have two things have the same name unless if they're the same thing, right? And this won't, will inevitably not be the same thing. So I'm gonna go to create a sketch, okay. Gonna do it on the surface of this bracket here. Okay, and now I'm gonna project the surface. All right, and then over here, I'm gonna project. Uh, oh yeah, so the six tube sprocket doesn't have a snowflake uh, pattern like all the other sprockets. So what I do is I just do uh, one of these tiny sections here, and then. I can do anything that's like cylindrical aligned onto this rocket. Uh, so I'll just use this uh, shaft cobbler, because why not? Okay, because that gives me the center point, this rocket, and that other six foot snowflake, I don't know what you would call it, uh, gave me this center point here. So I can draw that circle. Okay, and this same circle here as we drew before. I'm drawing a line again. Do not make sure make sure you're not like uh, clicking at one of these points. You want to click somewhere just along the line. Okay, so it should be close to the tangent. Otherwise, sometimes the tangent tool does not work. Okay, and I'm going to tangent. Okay, and now I'm trimming away these inner arcs like that. Go away. Okay, finish sketch. All right. Um, now I'm going to import a tube. No, oh, sorry, a chain link. Motion chain link. So for this one, uh, it's a bit different, and I, I mean, it's the main, main reason why I'm doing it right now. Uh, because let's say I want to going to point it, like I described earlier, to the same tube, right? Because uh, this line here is not straight, uh, this isn't going to come out so well, actually. Like, the two, like, I, I found that sometimes when you do it this way, the uh, chain link, right, you can see this is, this dot is not lined up on the line. Uh, this, this chain link will, like, not really uh, curve with the line in go straight. So instead what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to free move. I'm gonna pull it out over here. I'm gonna rotate it 30 degrees and I'm just gonna put it on the next two. Okay, because this is clearly along the path. I know how it, uh, what angle it's at and what, uh, where, where to point to point it. And I, and I know this is definitely where one of the uh, chain links will be around this sprocket here, okay? How did I know it was 30 degrees? Um, you take 360 degrees divided by the number of teeth on the sprocket. This teeth, this sprocket has 12 teeth, so that's 30 degrees, right? And then I click OK. And another reason why we create this chain component is so that when you create all of your chain pieces, they are like in one component instead of like just exploding your uh, browser, right? Okay, so again, create pattern, pattern path, components, chain link, path is this, here we drag backwards, path direction, oh, which went for me, there we go forwards now. So I'm dragging it that way then. Uh, making this lined up, so that was 32 just now, so maybe this is more like 30. Okay, seems pretty good to me. No, is that like just aligned? Maybe it's like very slightly off, but uh, I'm gonna take it. All right. Okay, and that is example two done. Believe again, always hide this sketch you create with your uh, creation of your path for your chain. No one wants to see it. I don't want to, the judges don't want to when looking at your picture screenshots in the engineering notebook.
Okay, again, yep. Yeah, doesn't quite work here. It probably, I think it turned out well on this side, right? But yeah. And this is mostly, again, to check uh, that your chain links are not hitting anything in their path. And also from out here, right? That looks fine. That looks correct. Okay, it looks like you've you've done a proper CAD. Uh, the solution, if you wanted to do this perfectly, it would be to point to point every single one properly, but no one has time for that. And I'm not going to ask you to do that, okay? And so that is the video on how to CAD a chain around sprockets efficiently.